Okay, I wanted to make a video that talks about air-fuel ratio, target air-fuel ratio, and how it work, interacts with the VE table and where flex fuel or ethanol, varying ethanol content is concerned. So when you open up the ProEFI software and go to the fuel tab, and go to target fuel mixture. This is, a, this is a good map that represents kind of a point that I want to make. Um, we've had several instances in the past where people don't fully understand what air fuel ratio is. They understand that they've been looking for specific numbers of 12 to 1 or 14.7 to 1, uh, things like that, but they don't really understand what that means and what it applies to. So I wanted to go over that uh, so everybody can have a clear understanding of how it works and how ProEFI uh, interacts with those changing air fuel ratios, uh, which brings me to my first point. We've had several people in the past that have been comparing it, our, our ethanol content air fuel ratio scale to a gasoline scale. So if you have an aftermarket gauge that doesn't know what fuel you're running, your, your air fuel ratio numbers are typically only gonna be in air to fuel ratios for gasoline. Now Lambda and desired equivalency will automatically compensate for those things, but people are very used to air to fuel ratio numbers. The air fuel ratio numbers that we broadcast are actual air to fuel ratio numbers. They're not based on a gasoline scale unless you're just running gasoline in the vehicle. For example, if you're running 100% ethanol, your air to fuel ratio for stoic would be nine to one. Okay, so a, uh, a lambda of one or a desired equivalency of one, which would be the same thing for gasoline at 14.6, but at 100% ethanol, we're at nine to one. So as you start requesting a richer mixture, you're gonna drop below those values of nine to one down into the sevens. This particular calibration has ethanol in it that's giving it a stoic ratio or a lambda of one or desired equivalency of one of 9.81. So those values are gonna change based on the fuel content of what you're running in a blended fuel. So you can't look at what we're broadcasting as air fuel ratio numbers that you're used to looking at on a gas scale. So these little notes and warnings right here explain that, that you need to be careful of those things. So what we're gonna do is show you how to use the units to make this work easier. So if we go in to the main page and click on units, and we set this off of air fuel ratio to lambda or desired equivalency. I prefer equivalency ratio because it's much simpler to understand. You don't really need to know a whole lot about what numbers mean what and what you're gonna need to use based on the load that you're running or how much boost, things like that. This is a straight multiplier off of stoic. So whatever stoic is, this means at 1.23, for example, that we're running 23% richer then stoic, and then 29, and 31, and 33. So these are all straight math multipliers for additional fueling based off of stoic. No matter what your ethanol content is, these numbers are always gonna apply and apply accurately. So you've got our target mixture for your low octane on the top, and your target mixture for high octane or ethanol content on the bottom, and then it blends between the two. So you can, run a richer mixture on gasoline on a high boost engine to keep it safer and then you can lean it out and be more aggressive based on ethanol content down here so it's a good idea to learn to use equivalency or even lambda for air fuel numbers when you're using blended fuels this will prevent problems down the road um, when you're looking at data logs and you're used to always looking at say you want to be at 11 and a half to one on a gas scale on a turbo engine this will prevent you from looking at that and saying, well, wow, I'm seeing nine to one. Why is it so rich? It, it's, it's a little confusing if you're not used to doing it. And we deal with, a, because our ethanol stuff is so involved and, and, and so state of the art, we deal with a lot of people who want to use it, but don't fully understand what that means. So it's important to understand that those air fuel ratio numbers are actual air to fuel ratios. They aren't based on a gas scale. Like I said, unless you're running straight gasoline. So it's important to pay attention to what your stoic set point is. That's what this display is right here. That's the actual set point that you're getting from your ethanol content. If you're running straight gasoline, it's really not even 14.6 on pump anymore. It's usually around 14.1 because the government mandates that you have about 7% ethanol. And it may vary from state to state, but that's usually what we see is about 7 to 10% ethanol. And so that stoic value does actually change a little bit, even if you're not running an ethanol content sensor. So 
Um, it's just important to understand that and, and how these all work together um, to get you the mixture that you want. So once these targets are entered, then your O2 feedback loop adjusts towards this target. So in other words, if I have my VE table dialed in perfectly and I'm running at a, a light vacuum load of you know, a lambda of one or desired equivalency of one and I wanna run it a little richer, I can literally just type in 1.1 in EQ, it'll run 10% richer instantly without any O2 feedback. And this is also my target table. So when feedback's on, it will also target 1.1, but without any O2 feedback at all, these numbers are gonna dictate what your ultimate mixture is based on your VE. So your VE table is basically just telling you how efficient the engine is as an air pump. So a number of 1.08 means that it's 108% efficient. So if your swept cylinder volume, for example, is 500 cc's, that means at that point, it's pulling in more than 500 cc's of air. Aside from boost and everything else, just in a naturally aspirated state, it's going to be pulling in 8% more than that. So uh, that's just telling the computer how efficient it is as an air pump. So obviously when it's more efficient and it uses more air, it needs more fuel. So going up is adding more fuel going down is taking fuel away but it still gets multiplied by what your target is so it's saying this is the mixture i want under these conditions rpm and load or boost if this is if our target's 1.31 it's going to take into account your 108 percent efficiency and factor in your mixture of 1.31 and that's what calculates your pulse width and that's based on your stoic set point right there all that's done in the background but it is important to understand how the target tables work with flex fuel and how they work in getting your final fuel mixture. There's a lot of confusion on that with people that don't fully understand true VE systems. So I just wanted to do a quick video to kind of clarify that and uh, hopefully that makes a bit more sense and, and you'll have more success down the road.